We are focused on the Middle East this morning as tensions are mounting. Hamas confirmed their top political leader, Ismail Haniyeh, was an assassinated in an airstrike in Iran, marking the biggest escalation of this war so far, the highest ranking death of a Hamas political official since the war in Gaza began. It comes just hours after Israel said that it killed a top Hezbollah commander in Beirut in response to the Golan Heights attack on a children's soccer field. The U.S. carrying out a self-defense strike in Iraq as regional tensions continue to rise. Here's U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. Can you confirm if Israel is behind the strike that killed the senior Hamas leader in Tehran? And did you get any warning that this was going to happen? I don't have anything for you on that. Uh, and we'll, uh, we, we certainly have heard the recording, but I don't have any, any, any additional information. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that uh, we keep things from uh, turning into a broader conflict uh, throughout the region. Meanwhile, Iran's foreign minister condemning the attack on Lebanon, warning that Hezbollah and Lebanon have the right to retaliate and that Iran would hold Israel and the United States responsible for a wider regional war. Here's Vice President Harris on the IDF strike in Lebanon. Israel has the right to defend itself, and I unequivocally support Israel's right to remain secure and to defend the security of Israel. Um, what we know in particular is yes, it has the right to defend itself against a terrorist organization, which is exactly what Hezbollah is. But all of that being said, we still must work on a diplomatic solution to end these attacks, and we will continue to do that work. Joining me now, America First Policy Institute Center for American Security co-chairman, Fox News contributor and former national security advisor to President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence, Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg is here. Lieutenant General, thanks very much for joining us. Give us your reaction uh, to the Hamas leader taken out in Iran, followed by the Hezbollah leader taken out in Beirut. Yeah, Maria, thanks for having me. Look, this is a bold statement by Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel, not only to the region, but to the world as well. It reminds me of very strong decisions made by U.S. presidents, from Teddy Roosevelt to Donald J. Trump. In, his, in the Israeli term or, or American terms, if you harm an Israeli, if you harm an American, your life is forfeit. And it's very clear what they did. When, when they went after, in, in Hezbollah, in Lebanon, when they went after Fawad Shukra, which was the number two individual in Hezbollah, the number one military commander, but also responsible for the 1983 bombing in Be the Beirut, the Marine barracks that killed over 283, sent a clear message to them. Then when they went after Ismail Haniya in, in Tehran, uh, when they killed the number one leader of Hamas, that sends a clear message. And the message is, do not trifle with Israel. And they don't have a right to defend themselves. They've got a moral obligation to defend themselves. And I applaud what they did. It was bold. It was dramatic. It's exactly what was needed to be done to send that message to the, to the world that this thing needs to end and end soon. But it's going to end on Israeli terms. Look, here's the concern everybody ha needs to have, and, and it's a risk assessment. What you're seeing right now and what you're hearing right now is Armageddon knocking on the door in the Middle East because this thing can escalate very fast, very hard, and it depends what Hezbollah is going to do in Lebanon. It's going to depend what Iran does as well. I think Hamas is a little bit off the table. So a bold strike, a bold statement, and I have to applaud Netanyahu. For, being, for doing what he did, and I think the world should as well. And, and of course, quite bold to take the head of uh, Hamas out uh, mm -hmm. in Tehran, in Iran. So what kind of a retaliatory uh, move would you expect from Iran at this point? Well, it's not just Iran, Marie. It's also what's going to happen with Hezbollah, because Hezbollah is probably, when you look at it, the armaments they have is the largest non-state military actor in the world with the amount of rockets and missiles that they can shoot. But, you know, this is one of those things you pick, you go to the Supreme Leader, this is what the United States should do, be very, very wary of what you are going to do next, because it is very clear that Netanyahu and the Israeli government has said enough is enough, and they will respond accordingly. Here's what I would do. This is the message I would send to make sure it doesn't blow up. 
It's sort of what Nixon did after the 1973 Yom Kippur War. I would line up every C-17 transport aircraft the United States has, put them on the runway, load them with armaments, and send them to Israel, and said, stop this now. And this is the message to Tehran. This is the message to Hezbollah in Lebanon. This is how you handle it. Just standing back and making pronouncements, verbal pronouncements, is absolutely foolish. Yeah. There has to be concrete action. The Israelis did it, and we should do it as well. Well, Iran said that it was going to hold the U.S. as well as Israel responsible. So what is the impact mm -hmm. or a potential retaliation on the U.S. that we should be aware of? Well, I wouldn't be aware of anything. I would tell them we fear no one. If you want to do that, then you will pay the consequences. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't explain it. I wouldn't worry about it. I just explain to them who we really are, and we will make you pay a price if you do it. Okay. That's the message we should send. Now, we shouldn't worry about what they do. We have not heard from President Biden, although we, had, we did hear after the Hezbollah leader was taken down in Beirut, we heard from Kamala Harris. Uh, what kind of a response should we expect from the president? Shouldn't we have something from President Biden? Well, we should expect that, but I wouldn't say we're going to get anything okay. like that. I think right. we've been very, very negative. We've tried to be ambivalent, and that is not going to work. All you right. need bold, dramatic statements. That has not come out of the White House. General, thank you so much. Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, we so appreciate your insights on this.